Hello and welcome to Toussaint. Welcome to what I think is probably on. one of the most beautiful landscapes and environments ever made. This is actually a DLC for The Witcher 3 called Blood and Wine. And many people know on my channel that I've mentioned before that to me The Witcher 3 is hands down the the greatest game ever made. Big statement there, Para. There's not many games that really sort of keep my interest up for a long time and over 120 hours there's still so much I want to do, have to do, I want to go back in and so many things that I haven't seen, so many amazing interesting characters. Just so much in this game is just absolutely mind-blowing. Witcher 2 used to be one of my all-time favourite games, there was just something about that game. Not only were the characters interesting, the storyline seemed extremely grown up, and the graphics go, were beautiful. Go. So I knew that Witcher 3 was going to be good, and I mean this DLC, the size of it, the quality of the side quests, in over 120 hours, I don't think I've ever done two missions that have been similar. You just think how difficult that would be even to write down more than 20 different quest types that fit into the realm of the books, the world, and that whole vibe of The Witcher. These characters have grown up, they're complex. They've got their own stories, the backstories, got their own personalities. Every single character in this game is acted absolutely top-notch, Hollywood quality. But this DLC, Blood and Wine, is, I think, CD Projekt Red's pinnacle, the crown and glory of the Witcher series. It's definitely got a different feel to it, as you can see, it's based on southern France. We have these beautiful green landscapes with vineyards and farms, small villages, castles, and the actual knights and people in this area a very la -di da they're very over the top, they have gold armour, peacock feathers, it's very, very fantasy based. And of course with Geralt, being the Witcher, he doesn't kind of go for it, he absolutely hated me putting on this uniform, because that was part of a tournament, which was part of another quest. So it's very la -di da and over the top, and it's absolutely brilliant. There's lots of humour in here as well, there is, no spoilers, there's, there's homage to some other games in there as well. But I'm finding with this one, in particular, that even going from point A to point B, even if it's, say, uh, two miles in-game, I'm not wanting to rush. It's one of those games where even just plodding along like this on Roach just seems to be a beautiful thing. I think part of the, the star of Witcher 3 is the environment. It's the world. It's believable. It's just breathtaking even at night time or at dusk or even in a storm with thunder and lightning the game's just it, it's beyond anything else that I've played now I really got into Mass Effect Andromeda for the first 15-20 hours and then I jumped back into Witcher 3 and it, it's just it doesn't make sense this DLC is better than, I would say, nearly every single AAA title I've played in the last five years. Again, big words, but I absolutely mean it, 100%. It... I mean, the, the characters, the animation, it's all believable. Mass Effect, the characters look cardboard and wooden and just not believable. And it makes you wonder what, you know, the Witcher 3 and all its DLCs were created with 15 million pounds of development. Mass Effect Andromeda, if you believe the figures from EA, was over 200 million. So what, what have CD Projekt Red got that Mass Effect didn't have? I mean, EA, obviously, scum of every 
developer out there who just rush everything. But it just shows you that if you've got passion and talent, then you really can create a game that is this stunningly beautiful. It is jaw-droppingly beautiful. And some of the quests in this game, no spoilers, there's one involving spoons. <laughs> yes, spoons. The animation on said enemy was so amazing, I actually went and pressed reload just to watch it again. That's how good it was. And there is so much content just in this DLC alone that if you were to rush just the main quests in this area, there's over 35 hours. Now that's excluding all the other 90 side quests. And every single one of those side quests is fully acted. Every one of them's, you know, every one of them is top notch. Every single one of those side quests, in, in honest reality, could be a main quest. It's that good. I know you're saying, oh, you're, you're gushing over this game. I just, it is just, every time I jump back in, if you, honestly, if you haven't played Witcher 3, please buy it. Support the devs. I mean, they give away 16 free DLCs as a thank you to the community, and it breaks my heart to think of people downloading and pirating this game. They really are one of the world's top developers, and it just makes you realise that Cyberpunk 2077, when it comes out, is just going to be phenomenal. So other developers might as well just give up now. <laughs> and thank God that CD Projekt Red, when they set the company up, they set it up so that they could never be bought out by EA or any of the bigger companies. That's true foresight for a game developer. Anyway, I've been paraplays gushing over The Witcher 3, Blood and Wine, incredible. And I intentionally haven't shown you any of the quests because... This is a game you need to enjoy yourself. Thanks for watching. I'm going to jump back in and give some wench what for. See you later. Bye-bye. Go out and buy it.